Hello there, Rassi. All right, so well done for getting this work in. Let's have a look. So employers are often seeking ways to enhance the productivity and hiring lifetime workers will be a viable option or could be a viable option. It's probably more appropriate there. There are tremendous benefits of both employees and employers that can be obtained. Okay, so the benefits of what can be obtained. So let's put it there. So there are tremendous benefits that can be obtained. And actually it's kind of redundant, yeah? Because what else happens with benefits? You're not saying that the, that the benefits can be lost because that's clear. So you don't really need to say that they can be obtained. So there are tremendous benefits for both employees and employers, which we will discuss here. Okay, that's good, but remember that structure. Okay, um, so how could we adapt the sentence guide structure? Well, we could have said there are tremendous benefits for both employees and employers, comma, these can be, let's see, this essay will analyze these using examples from Australia and somewhere else uh, from Australia and there's no example there, let's see. Okay, so from, exa um, from Australia and companies to demonstrate points and prove arguments, okay? If we can get that sentence in, in one way or another, then it's a grammatically perfect sentence that we've got nailed and under control, okay? So let's go. Firstly, it might be said that if workers are stay, no, if workers stay until they are retired, the knowledge and experience will be more useful, leading to a leading to a higher level of output and services. No. Output. Okay, leave. yes, yeah, sorry, that's fine. And services. This is because it will take more time to hire and train new employees and even longer to achieve similar efficiency if efficacy. Good. Yeah. Moreover, businesses which have longer remaining workers would develop well-established reputations, not would, we would say, um, or would most likely, or are more likely, okay, so just introducing hedging, would most likely develop well-established reputations, good. For example, recent governmental studies showed that in Australia, 35% of retired people worked for well-developed firms throughout their life, good. Therefore, it is clear that having lifetime employees results, results in not only economical gain, but also reputational, but also positive reputational outcome for the company, or, or even better, but also a positive, a positive reputational outcome for the company. Okay, if we're saying reputation, we've got to be clear whether it's positive or negative. All right. So let's carry on. Good paragraph, though. Um, we're well in there with the word count. That's good. And we managed to get two points in as well. So that's really good. Well done there. Secondly, there is ample evidence to suggest that workers who remain at this, the same organization earn career progression, job prospects, and economical rewards. Fantastic. And well done for using ample evidence. Good. This is due to the fact that employers usually offer pay increments, perks, and financial rewards such as bonuses or incentives in order to motivate employees to stay longer. Good. For example, many firms select the most experienced one to grant foreign trainings, no, to provide training abroad or scholarships. Good. Ah, okay, okay, not to provide. Uh, so many firms select the most experienced employees for trainings abroad or scholarships or even better for trainings or scholarships abroad consequently one job for one life makes full of make full of rewards no consequently one job for one life offers uh, offers numerous rewards offers considerable rewards okay to conclude, hiring employees who will spend their whole life for the business would be beneficial for both. Hang on a second. 
To conclude, hiring employees who have spent their whole life for the business would be beneficial for both. Okay, therefore I believe that employers want to hire workers to stay for their entire life at the same firm. The employers ought to hire workers to stay their entire life at the same firm. Very good. Good way to finish. Solid examples. Um, very good work here. Very pleased. We do have to work on the grammar structure of some of the sentences, but I think if you implement the corrections, add them to your error list and review them and probably review the theory behind them as well, then we're going to see some big improvements. Okay, let's carry on. Okay, so let's see. This paragraph compares the popularity of nine academic subjects among students in three countries. Good start. Um, what could we say instead? Just to improve this horizontal bar chart, this horizontal, yeah, this horizontal bar chart, probably be more appropriate, but apart from that, good start. In Africa, science, math, is it math or maths? I think maths. Um, math is okay, but it just says maths here, so it'd probably be better to go with that. So science, maths, and languages are the most popular subjects with around 100,000 students, comma, whereas physical education and music are the least popular with just above 50,000 each, okay? So we've missed some key prepositions there and the punctuation, but apart from that, it's very good. We can't use stay, okay, because it's not changing, so we've got to keep it we don't have to, we can't use it, um, but well done. We've used a good comparison there. It's a great way to start. So let's see. Okay, and we managed to group some of the information together. Nearly 80,000 students prefer art to geography and religious subjects, and literacy is the second most popular. Okay, well done for using the superlatives as well. Fantastic. Similarly, in Asia, the highest amount of pupils, about 200,000, prefer science, math, and languages, while the other subjects, subject preferences, do not vary widely from the highest, from the most popular subjects and remain at 180,000. Very good. In Europe, science, maths, and languages and physical education are the highest ranking rating subjects with 150,000 pupils, students, but not followers. While geography, comma, while geography has the lowest uh, student numbers, the other four subjects are preferred nearly by equal amounts of students at around 125,000 each. Good. We don't have a respectively sentence, but it's not it's not a problem, but it could have been an opportunity for you to help to boost your score. Overall, it can be clearly seen that science, math and languages are the most popular subjects in all three countries. Countries or, or continents. Okay, in all three continents, comma, Africa, Asia and Europe. Very good work. Your task one is, in, is coming along fantastically. We've got the comparisons, we've got the superlatives, and you've managed to group the information and structuring it uh, in, very, in a very logical fashion. So good work there, Bipana. Carry on improving like that, and we'll soon have this one nailed. So you know the score. Modify your improvement list. Implement the corrections. Send me back the corrected work and send me back your two new essays. Okay, buddy? Have a good afternoon.